Hello there and welcome to the all new Kicking It With The Colonels podcast, the official podcast of EKU Athletics. I'm your host, Wes Chandler. These gentlemen right here need no introduction, but I'm going to do my job anyway. And just in case you've been living under a rock, we are joined by A.W. Hamilton, the head coach of Eastern Kentucky. We got two superstars in the building today, Devontae Blanton and Isaiah Cozart, who we spoke with the fire marshal earlier to make sure we had two players so hot to end the year could be in the same building so we, it is okay so we we got that cleared and you won't find two better players that finish the year hotter than these two guys right here guys thanks for joining us on the kicking it with the colonels no problem no problem thanks uh, for having me. cozy's fighting this smile <laughs> this smile it's all right hey you had 31 and 17 i'm trying to be professional so before we started this he was smiling right when he took my chair <laughs> I want to thank you, the fans, for making us part of your day as well. And each episode in Kicking It With The Colonels, we're going to have a special guest or guest we will talk with. We'll talk some sports. We'll talk off-the-field developments as well and give you, the fans, a behind-the-scenes experience of EKU Athletics. And we I have the focus on EKU basketball here in this episode, and it truly was an impressive season for EKU basketball. 23 wins, guys, and capped by just an unbelievable run in the CBI and, and making it all the way to the championship game. Coach, I want to start with you. And now that you've had a couple days to process this season, can you put into words what this season meant for, for you and the guys? Uh, this was um... – I'm so proud of these guys. It, it, it goes back to this summer, um, you know, just how this group came together. And, you know, I, I mention this all the time, so people will probably get tired of me saying this, but you talk about family, and coaches talk about families. These guys are a real family. They really love each other. They really sacrifice for each other. They're really there for each other. Um, their, their bond in the locker room is incredible. When we travel – uh, the relationships are incredible, how much they're they're together um, and how much they're always uh, for each other. You know, my brother passed away this summer and uh, it was tough. It was the toughest thing I ever had to deal with. Um, and uh, it'll, it'll, the pain will never go away. But I remember the visitation. Um, I look over, uh, there's hundreds of people coming in and I see the entire team come in. And then the next day at the funeral, you know, uh, our family walks in and I look over in the left pew, the whole team's in the left pew. And uh, it just, um, what these guys did for me um, was uh, really special. I'll never be able to repay them because this has been a, it's been a tough year personally, but for the joy they brought me, like it, it was in practice, like being with these guys, these guys never had a bad day. Now, this is the first time I told them that. I was only <laughs> going to tell them that. Then, you know, next year they'll have some bad days because sometimes I create bad days. Like, remember when I threw you out of practice, the whole team? Yeah, uh, that one. Yeah, it worked, though, didn't it? A <laughs> yeah. couple times. But these guys, times. they they just uh, – they're so much fun to coach. They're so much fun to coach because they're great young people. Absolutely, and uh, that's just incredible. What about you guys? Can you put it into words what this season meant for you all? Man, I mean, it's been special. Just tell you that. Um you know, just first of all, the guys that, you know, I've been around, like Coach, you know, when he says, like, we're a family, like, he's not exaggerating. Like, you know, the whole team, you know, I think just or just kind of a group of brothers. I think we've all grown closer. And, you know, Coach, he's done a real good job, you know, managing to get us close, which uh, at the start of the summer I didn't think was, you know, was going to be possible because we had so many new guys coming in. I was new. You know, we only had, like, what is it, two, three? Five guys. Five five guys? Yeah. So, I mean, it was just, you know, it, it was it was a great, great season um, that I think, you know, us being together for so long just kind of helped it. You know, we went to the Bahamas and stuff. I think that was the first time where I was like, I kind of like hanging out with you guys a little <laughs> bit, you know? <laughs> well, you know what I remember was when you getting on that tube at uh, Lake Cumberland. I don't remember that. Yeah, I do. Remember when <laughs> he got on that tube? He edged that real remember. quick. I didn't ride a tube that day. Well, I know. You chickened out. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't even get on the water. Yeah, I'm not that big of a swimmer, so. Uh, we'll, we'll get them this summer. <laughs> oh, I got you. Well, I mean, you even said this this year you didn't know that some of the stuff that you've done this year was possible for in your game. Mm, no. Nah. I mean – uh, if you told me, like, I don't know, like a year ago or something that I was going to be, like, starting and, you know, going for, like, 20, 31 points in a game, I 
might have might just laughed at you. I ain't gonna lie. You, you, you can say you went for thirty one and seventeen. You can say that. <laughs> I got the exact stat. I mean, like, yeah, but um, you know, it's just. I mean, it's just it's just been great. I mean, I I definitely you know I've been you know saying time and time you know give it all to God. I mean, you know the whole season that that I've had and stuff, especially just you know for for one season doing all I did. I mean, I just you know I'm grateful not just to the the guys and the coach, but also yeah. you know just family for kind of coaching me through it. Tay Tay, what about you? Um, it's been amazing to say the least. Um, I never been a part of a team. Every team I've been on, I've been a family. But this year has been different. Um, like, everybody just clicked. Um, like he said, when we in the locker room, you can just feel the energy. We never have a day where we arguing with each other. Um, it's just brotherly love every day. Mm-hmm. And I owe that all to Coach because, like he said, when we first brought us in, he said he wants us to be a player-like program, holding ourselves accountable, you know. And every day we push each other. And through that push, through that adversity, we built a bond that will never break from – from when we lead us to when we old man one day drinking beer or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I I agree with his entire statement except for the except arguing for part. <laughs> that one. They do nah, yeah, 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 no, yeah. But you know, you know how brothers argue. <laughs> right, you know? right, right, it's right, just right. a matter of fact. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's been it's been amazing. Um, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Now you come from Ohio. You're from from right here in Richmond. Kind of tell us what your recruiting process was like. What what. How did you wind up at EKU, both of y'all? No. Uh, so – you want to talk <laughs> about why you said no first? <laughs> I knew he was going to say that. Uh, no, I that's mean, okay. Go no, ahead. Yeah, yeah, hey, it's so, always better the second so time as, around. Yeah, yeah. As, a se- <laughs> as a senior, uh, EK- EKU was actually my very first offer, like in general, like for college. I think um, I got offered my sophomore year, um, just kind of like interest type stuff. And then senior year – they, you know, gave me an official, like, offer, said, you know, why don't you come down? And I'm, you know, <laughs> no fault to, to A-Dub. I mean, he pulled out all the stops when I went down there for my first visit. He definitely showed out. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. 100%. The fans need to hear that. I was all in <laughs> trying to get he you. He definitely showed out 100%. Um, you know, just different. Back then, I had, you know, different different interest in, in going places and, uh, you know, uh, at the time, WKU just uh, looked more appealing, a little, little more appealing. <laughs> but, but um, they, you know, when they reached out to me again, uh, my junior year, which when I first, um, when I first put my name in the transfer portal, I really didn't know, like, you know, if I was even going to get any D1 offers because nobody had seen me play in like three, three years or so, almost three years. So, you know, when I got EKU, when they uh, – I think it was Coach Allen. He called me first. I was just, I was uh, surprised, just shocked almost. Like they, you know, still kind of, you know, wanted to see what I could do. And, you know, I wanted to prove that I, you know, could still play, you know, after all, all the that time. So, you know, we, we met we met up with each other. I think it was Coach Allen and, and um, Coach A-Dub that uh, came down to Bowling Green to kind of talk. And uh, we kind of, you know, settled some things. And I went on a visit and, Rest is history. Um, so through high school, I was dealing with some knee injuries, um, stuff like that, and uh, my recruiting process kind of like went downhill. Um, a lot of schools stopped calling, and um, Eastern Kentucky came calling on the door. Um, Coach Lapore. Um, we actually went to the same high school, yep. uh, St. Ed's, and um, I didn't really know much about Eastern Kentucky. I didn't, I didn't know like if it was. I didn't know really what to expect. Um, it was during COVID, so I couldn't take a visit. Um, Coach Lepore was FaceTiming me, walking around campus, <laughs> showing me campus, all that type of stuff. Um, but I ended up talking to my brother, and he was just, just like, trust Lepore. Um, he's a family friend. Known since I was like five years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just what I ended up doing. I ended up trusting Lepore, and it been amazing for me. So do you and Coach like trade like restaurant spots to say, hey, check this out? What do you, <laughs> how, do you, how do you work that? Uh, me, me and Lepore, we just got a special bond. Uh, <laughs> they argue a lot. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they really argue a lot. <laughs> and, and coach, what was it that made you want to ultimately decide, say, hey, I want to recruit these guys? Well, I'll start with Cozy. I, I, when I first got the job, 
you know, one of the things that we wanted to do is we wanted to recruit the state of Kentucky. I'm proud mm -hmm. of Kentucky. I'm a Kentucky guy. And, um, you know, so recruiting Cozy and Michael Marino was a priority for us. Um, we were able to get Michael, um, and we went all in on Cozy. I, I loved Cozy. Uh, he had great instincts. He could block shots. Uh, he ran really well. He's got great hands. And he played for a great coach, a Hall of Fame coach. And so you knew you were getting somebody that was going to be ready to play. And unfortunately, we didn't get Coase. But, you know, God has a plan, and, and he, he's in charge, and he knew. And uh, so it wasn't the right time. Uh, and then I, I never gave up on Coase. I told him when he, t when he called me and said, Coach, I'm, I'm not going to be coming to Eastern. I said, that's okay. You know, if it doesn't work out at your neck, it's a spot you go to, you can always come home. And uh, so when he got into the portal, we were able to go down and meet in a nice coffee shop there in Bowling Green. Uh, we had a really good conversation. Uh, he's got wonderful parents um, that I, I think the world of. And, you know, we were able to get Cozy on an official visit. And, and things just fit right. And it was the right time for Coz, uh to come to Eastern. Um, Tay-Tay. Tay-Tay was a superstar. We knew Tay-Tay was a superstar. Uh, he's got his, – his mind is so sharp. His basketball mind is so sharp. Now, I get on him all the time because he's really smart in the classroom too, and he'll get a little bit lazy. Uh, <laughs> but but he's, a, he's such a smart basketball player, and he's got great size, and his brother was a, a big-time player. His dad's a great coach. Uh, he just comes from a basketball family, and St. Ed's is probably the premier high school in the state of Ohio. So we knew what the type of player we were getting. And I'm proud of him because his development. His freshman year, like, there was the, it was COVID. He got quarantined twice. And, like, you know, and that was, like, 10 days. And, you know, here, we, you know, you'd have to move to a different dorm. And that was tough. And it was, it was hard for, uh, for Tay Tay to get into a rhythm. And we had a really good team. Uh, he came in with Wendell Green. And we had a great class and Cooper Robb. And uh, but I'm proud of Tay because he's a worker, he's a grinder, and he kept he kept competing, and he got so much better. And then at the end of the year, I mean, when we beat Belmont in here and broke the 30 game OVC yeah. winning streak, it was like he was the key. And then we get to the OVC tournament. We're going against Terry Taylor. Uh, Austin P had a really good team, and and Tay Tay was a, a difference maker in that game, and we, we were able to win that game. And then his second year. He's he's like he takes this big jump and he's having an all conference type of season and he breaks his toe four games into league play. And that's hard. That's hard. That's hard to deal with. It's hard to play with. And we were basically we had a, a Jeff Carrico put him in a boot. So he's he didn't practice. We couldn't practice anymore because it was like we couldn't aggravate that toe. So we basically just put him in the boot. We get him to game day. We take the boot off and we'd like all right. We'd be like all right, Tay, go warm up. And uh, you know, and then Tay would come back to the locker room and say, Coach, I feel good. I'm gonna go. And then Jeff would come in behind him and say, I don't know if Tay can really go tonight. <laughs> but you know, he battled through that and and got us through the year. And I'm proud of him because. We had so many injuries we dealt with. We got yeah. down to like seven guys. Yeah. And uh, and Tay Tay and Cooper Robb and Michael Marino just wheeled us through that, that season. And then, you know, Tay Tay made another big jump. And, you know, the year he had uh, this year was historic. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was, you know, you look at the ending to our games. You know, I think we're 14 and six in two possession and overtime games. And you look at those 14 wins. And you think about all the magical plays that, that Tay Tay made for other people, uh, big shots he made. Um, I'm really proud of him. And what I'm so excited for is he's going to take another jump. Cozy's going to take a big jump. Like the momentum that Cozy got from the CBI was huge. Absolutely. Because Cozy, you know, sometimes he, he gets mad at me, but like I'm all over Cozy in practice about demanding the ball because I know he can score for us. And then for him to get 31 points, he finally looked at me, but he didn't say it, but he gave me the look like, man, maybe the coach is maybe right. right. <laughs> yeah, maybe the coach is right. Like, I can really score for him. He might us. know a thing or two. So then we have our end-of-the-year meeting, and Coe said he wants to start shooting three. So I don't uh -oh. know if we got there yet. <laughs> okay. I said middies. You I got the offseason. He started talking about threes, and I said, let's start with mid-range. And I told him, I said, you know what a mid-range shot is? Tell you, you'll like this. I said, a free throw. Mm-hmm. 
It's a lost art. I'm just saying. Game. I'm not saying anything about your free throws. You made a couple big free throws in the CBI, but I'm just saying. I brought the stat sheet just in, so you got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so this is a fun yeah. conversation. Yeah. Right? Well, the announcement has been made that the core of this team will return for next year, and with the exception of Cooper Robb, and that just escalates all that positive and, momentum. And Weston, and I don't want to forget Michael Wardy. Right, exactly. Michael Wardy as Michael well. Wardy, he was, uh, Michael Wardy's father is, uh, you know, battling cancer, and, my, and Wardy went through a lot. But yeah. Wardy's a big part of this, you know, program and absolutely. our success this year. He's one of our team captains. Yeah, absolutely. And, and he made some really big plays when EKU needed him the most. But talk about the positive momentum. He ended the CBI on a great run, and the core of this team is returning, and it's, it's going to be a, a, a really good season, you, you think, heading into next year. Whoever wants to take it first. Let's, 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 let's let Cozy get us started. I'm always getting it first, though. I mean, Lead off yeah. hitter. Yeah. I'm, like, for any team to get their original core coming back, like, for, for next year, is you know, it's, it's phenomenal. Like, just, you know, especially our team was, you know, not very kind of young. Like, you know, we had two very young guards that, you know, had an excellent season and uh, T-Dot and Leland. And, you know, them coming back and – Having a, a season under their belt and experience is going to be great. Uh, Mike, you know, obviously uh, Marino, he's coming back and stuff, and that's going to be, you know, huge just in terms of team leadership and having a guy that knows what he's doing. And, you know, um, uh, DJ and um, you know, Darden, Capiti, them, they're all coming back. Great core bench with um, uh, Turner Buttry and uh, Jackson, who I think, you know, are definitely going to uh, have a breakout year uh, this, this year coming up. So, I mean, just, you know, having all those, you know, those guys um, and even, um, you know, Dave, um, one of our red shirt bigs who's, you know, going to come probably come back and. He fouls <laughs> you a lot. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you can tiny, say that. <laughs> tiny Dave, Dave. But, no, I mean, he's, you know, I think we're just going to be so much, you know, better as a team, so much stronger, especially after the CBI tournament, knowing what it takes to right. to get to, you know, a championship and to, to try and win it, you know, and. Uh, going through all those games and those battles and trying to, you know, mitigate injuries and also just, uh, you know, uh, keep guys fresh. I think, you know, we're going to have a real, real uh, big opportunity for us next year coming up. Absolutely. Um, I'll say this, like, my first year since I've been here, since, like, we had everybody come back. Um, and, you know, like, with our press and how we press, it's, it's a lot to teach. Um, so just that alone, um, everybody know what they're doing. Uh, the freshmen become a sophomore, so they become uh, veterans now. Right. So that's just huge. Like like Cole said, they get a year under their belt, which is big because college basketball and high school basketball are two different things. You know, the game speed's different. The sky report's different. You know, they're not really raking in high school like that. So, mm -hmm. or learning how to play off two feet. Um, but the CBI was an amazing experience. Um, it just showed us like what we what it takes to get to a championship. Um, we know what it takes to get to a championship. And, you know, just looking at other teams and what they do and what they build off of when they whole team come back. You know, just looking at FAU, um, who's in the final four right now. Right. Um, they whole team came back from last year. Uh, just knowing your system, knowing what what you're supposed to do is just huge um, when you want to win and become a championship team. So that's that's just a big thing. And it gave these guys tournament experience. You know, playing short turnaround and, you know, the prep four games in four days. It gives these guys some tournament experience, Coach. It does. And, you know, sometimes you, you got to – and I want these guys, and we haven't done this yet, but we'll we'll sit back and we'll reflect uh, more on this season when the time's right. Um, but these guys, it's the most postseason wins at Eastern Kentucky since 1945. Uh, it's remarkable, you know, what they did. And they, they – uh, I told them before the season – I said, you know, my goal is, you know, obviously I walk in the locker room with the ladder. So the goal is we want to win a championship. That's the given goal. That's what we're here to do, to win a championship. And uh, I said I want them to be so invested into each other, into the university, into our community that if we lose our last game, I want everybody in the locker room. My goal was for everybody to be crying because it meant that much. And when we got beat by Liberty, we lost a heartbreaking game. We had a 13-point lead in that game. You know, we had beat Liberty earlier in the year. Then we played them again at their place, and we lost a heartbreaker. And that game hurt. That loss hurt. And uh, I walked in that locker room. I carried Tay-Tay 
uh, to the locker room. He was in full tears, and I walked in, and it worked. These guys were really invested. And when I told them that they had an opportunity and we got invited to play in the CBI, and we talked about what the CBI was and who had played in the CBI, who had won the CBI, what teams that played in the CBI had done after they played in the CBI. Look at FAU. You know, now they're in the Final Four. You look at Drake. You know, they had an unbelievable season. You look at UNC Asheville. They had an unbelievable season. And you look back at the past, the CBI, you know, it was just year after year after year after year. But the, the awesome thing that these guys, they wanted to keep playing. They wanted to keep yeah. practicing. They wanted to go to Florida. They wanted to represent Eastern Kentucky. They wanted to be together, and they wanted to try to win a championship. And and uh, it was a pretty special run they went on because, you know, we were down in every game. Mm -hmm. You know, we were down to Cleveland State. We were down like 13 points. You know, we get the game to overtime. You know, there's there's so many plays uh, that, that happen. Then we get the game into overtime. We go on a 17-1 run. Mm -hmm. Then we play the number one seed, and we get down again. You know, Tay Tay has a career high, 32 points. And we just find a way to win at the, at the, at the end of the game. You know, Cozy comes up with a big block. And uh, then we get into the Southern Utah game. We go to double overtime. <laughs> You know, but the, the really cool thing was everybody uh, played a big part in that, whether it was Michael getting us uh, energized in the Cleveland State game, making a couple big threes and really getting us going, or whether it was Johnny, you know, getting his blocks, uh, Turner coming in and making shots. I could go on and on, especially our young guards, the growth that they made. Uh, Darden Capiti played real well. But the thing that I will remember forever is how Cooper Robb got to end his career. Yeah. Because Cooper Robb has been such an important piece to this program. Like, we're, our brand is the most exciting 40 minutes in sports. But our identity is 40 tough. You know, we're going to guard. We're going to guard you 94 feet. Uh, we're going to put pressure on you both ends of the floor. We're going to dive after every loose ball. We're going to take charges. Uh, we always got each other's back. Um, and that's how we, we do it every day, how we lift weights, how we attack our academics. And for Cooper Robb, who, who is 40 tough, who left that legacy here, for him to be able to take his jersey off at the end of that game, he took it off and he knows he gave it everything he had. Mm -hmm. There was nothing left. You know, he, he left it all out on the floor. And, uh, you know, for that how he willed us to that comeback was pretty yeah. remarkable. Yeah, it, it says a lot about his, his character and his statement. He certainly did that for Easter Kentucky. So how long before the preparations begin for next year? I know it really never stops as a head coach, but what about you guys? Um, after a season, I like taking a break, you know. Absolutely. Uh, seasons like it's just a long it's a commitment. Grind. Yeah, it's a it's a grind for sure. Um, but like you say, it really never stops, you know. Um, but to answer your question, um, usually after every final four, we get back in the weight room, and then it starts from there. Mm -hmm. Uh, train every 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 rep like it should last. Um, and then we're gonna probably start pick up pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Um, getting back in the gym, getting back with the guys, and then. Get ready for summer. As he gets a drink of water right here. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, same thing. Same thing. Um, like, you know, the C, especially like with the uh, whole CBI tournament playing like four games, technically five games, the right. kind of overtimes we, we had in, uh, in, in four days. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a pretty big commitment. So, you know, just, yeah, about a week or so of rest and then, uh, final once the final four is over, get back in the weight room, attack the weights, and uh, then get into individuals the next week, and we'll be good to go. And, and for all three of you, because basketball takes up so much of your time, don't get a chance to do a lot of stuff you want to do personally. So on the rare occasion you do get that chance, what do you all like to do? <laughs> we we like. Don't know if it, we both on the game basically twenty like a video game. Yeah, we both all on right, a video game. Yeah, I mean. You know, I've been I've been grinding hard on the on the game. For, so, like, for the if past uh, four days. if if the college basketball video game came out again, what would be your rating? Oh, at least eighty. Yeah, eighty. Yeah, All right. I, I, I have to give myself a good eighty-five. It's went, it's yeah. went up since you got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I started out. Player development. <laughs> right, right, right. Ninety-nine block for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Right. Still a shame. He was a whole, not whole conference my, player of the year defensively. My player. Uh, uh, <laughs> I went through a whole my player arc this this season. Yeah, out. But yeah, I say around like 80, 85, 85. Well, that, well, what would your rating be? 
I say I say about eighty five, eighty five rating. <laughs> ninety nine uh, mid range specialist. Yeah, yeah. Mid-range. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> coach, coach, what do you like to do? You know, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. You know, I, I'm I'm so invested in this, and I I, I love being the coach here. Um, you know, my family and uh, my kids and my wife, and they we pour everything we got into Eastern Kentucky, and uh, so I love these guys. Um, I, the off season is fun because we get to build the player, you know, and they get older, they get smarter. And, um, so I look forward to the off season. Um, you know, I get to spend more time with my wife and kids, which is great. Uh, get to spend more time with my parents in Georgetown, which is, which is, uh, really exciting. So, um, other than that, I really don't have many hobbies. <laughs> this is this who I am, basketball, basketball you know, all basketball. Day, all day, every day. Yeah. You don't golf or anything? I do not golf. I do wow. not golf. But if you want to golf, we can go out there. That way we can spend some time together because uh, I know you like spending time with me. Uh, you know, so you, you know what's Cozy really, avoids me at all costs. If I, if I golf, I'm definitely going to hit somebody. You know what's really golf. fun is top golf. Have you all ever top golf? I have never I played top golf. It's really fun. Really? You can, like, make a, a day out of it. You can they bring you food. It's, mm. it's really fun. Is if there you, one out here in Kentucky? Jo- the closest one is Cincinnati. They're building uh, one in Louisville right now. Oh, okay. But yeah, it's, it's – uh, my, my – I, I slice a bunch and they go like <laughs> bonkers, but it's really fun if you if you enjoy golf. Fun. Yeah. No. All right. So, what's the earliest basketball memory you all have? And coach, you played. You can you can answer that as well. Man, I I didn't start um, playing like actual basketball till I was I think around thirteen, fourteen. So like right before high school. Um, so I, I think like uh, probably when I was in I was in eighth grade. We we uh we won our uh, like regional championship. I forgot what what it's called, regional or, or district. Or, <laughs> <laughs> it looks at me, no, you know, like <laughs> big time old question. <laughs> help, help me out here, coach. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I just I I distinctly remember that that game. It was a good game, but um, I didn't get. I got no points. Uh, like uh, fifteen rebounds, like five blocks. Nice. That's, yeah. So. Uh, my whole life been basketball really mm-hmm. since I came out the womb. Um, I just remember my favorite memory is like watching my brother playing Final Fours, uh, him playing Michigan State National Championship game. Um, I was probably about like five, six years old watching him play that. And those experiences are just amazing, something you just never forget. Um, just seeing all the different colors in the crowd. Right. It's 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 something it's, it's it's amazing. I just, I can't put it in words how. And something you want to go to as a player, yeah. right? Yeah. You want to you want to live that. Yeah, that's like yeah. that's my biggest dream. Um, leading us to the Final Four. Uh, forget the Sweet Sixteen. I'm trying to lead us to like the Absolutely. biggest, the biggest stage possible, and that's my goal. Start with the end in mind. Yes, sir. Coach. You know what? This is fresh in my mind, so I'm going to say this, and I, I know Cozy's looking at me right now, so this is going to be really good. This <laughs> is going to be really good. <laughs> We just celebrated the 25th anniversary of our 1998 state championship team at Scott County. Um, and it <laughs> makes me feel old, but that's that was a great memory. So, Ben, it's fresh in my mind because it just happened. It, it happened at this year's Sweet 16. Uh, we were at the CBI, but all of my teammates and uh, former coaches uh, got recognized in the semi, at halftime of the semifinal game. Uh, so that's that's pretty cool. Brought back awesome. a lot of great memories. Yeah, awesome. And last question for they you. All right. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's that Madison Central coming uh, out right, in you. Right, right. <laughs> We're all together though. <laughs> <laughs> last question for you guys is what kind of like pregame ritual do you have? Everybody, everybody's got their own superstitions. Well, for let's, me, let's hear it. For me, um, I got a ritual before every game is um, before pregame or pregame meal. I gotta go to sleep. I got. I walk Matt. down there, I like, get my little play, or whatever, and That's then true. get my, make sure I'm the first one up there, turn all the lights off, the, turn all the lights off, go to sleep for an hour, and then take a shower, get my hair right. You know, you gotta look. Oh good. yeah, yeah. Gotta look good for the cameras, and then. Um, Listen to my music. That's that's my pregame. What's the motto? If you look good, look good, feel good, feel good, play, play good. good. Yeah. And if you play good, they pay good. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I got a slightly weird. Every I think everybody on the team knows what I do <laughs> for pregame. It's slightly. I I got so basically I have to get ready like I'm getting getting ready for going on a date. 
basically okay. i get i get the deodorant on and stuff that's and brush, important i brush my teeth <laughs> and i uh, gotta comb the hair that's like almost an obsession i gotta make sure my hair is combed and stuff and uh and after that i wash my face and i'll be i'll be good to go that's so awesome that takes like around 10 15 minutes I just pace around here. <laughs> stop. I get dressed way too early, and I just pace around. I'm just I get so anxious and excited for these guys. Yeah, absolutely. And and guys, I want to thank you for your time. Appreciate it so much. This was a blast. I had fun talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. For thank you. Me. That's A. W. Hamilton, Devontae Blanton, and Isaiah Cozart, our guest here on the episode of Kicking It with the Colonels. I'm Wes Chandler. Until next time, thanks for kicking it with the Colonels. <laughs>